Hi, it's Paul from Paul's Fishing Systems here. Recently, Ian James and I went up to Uratiti to see if the big snapper had arrived in yet. We unpack the drone and the remote, switch them on, and they take about 20 seconds to a minute for the two to connect, depending on where the satellites are. Once the drone is connected to the satellites, you then calibrate it, pull the lever down, 10 or 12 pushes on the auto return home button that will put the drone into the calibration mode the green lights to your chest one loop horizontal green lights pointing down one horizontal and that's it once the lights go green you're ready to fly and you've set the home position so then we do a quick test fly and that's just fly up 10 20 meters go left, go right, press auto return home and just check that it actually comes back to the spot that you've just launched from. Everything seems to be working perfectly well. Uh, once we get to the end of this we'll press the home button. It takes a second or two, you'll see the drone will maybe rise to 20 meters because if it's under 20 meters it always flies up to 20 meters before it returns home. Then does a rotation as it's aiming back towards home. And then it's on its way back. Now I find that when I'm on the over the high tide there's a lot of soft loose sand and I prefer to hand catch. So I just press the auto return home button until it goes beep beep that takes it out of auto return home slowly bring the drone down stop it get hold of it and then just hold the down lever until the drone switches off so now we're ready to cut the baits up lay the line out put the baited traces on connect all the weights and everything uh, this takes about three or four minutes depending how efficient you are um, and we know that the drone's ready to take off, so we've done it the correct way around. And we've done it this way so that we don't have baits sitting on the beach for too long attracting seagulls. If I've got big baits or a lot of weight on the line, I'm, I always take care to do a soft takeoff so that I don't trip the inertia release on takeoff. Um, and then once you're up and you've got a bit of line sag, the constant load just allows the clip to remain attached. 350. 400. I keep looking at the remote feed out. It tells me how fast the drone's going, how far away it is. And once it's at the desired distance, I just jam my head, hand over the top of the reel and that shock just allows the clip to release and it drops. If the drone carries on beyond 500 meters, it will auto return home. If I stop the drone short of 500 meters, I then press return home, auto return home and the drone will start heading back. After a couple of seconds, I just have a look at the remote and make sure that the drone distance is getting less so that I know that the auto uh, return is working. When the drone comes back I have the option of either letting it auto land by itself or I can press the auto return button until it goes beep beep and that will put it out of auto return home if I want to do a hand catch. Hand catching stops sand getting blown through the motors. It's not so important on wet sand like on that set, but when you've got the dry sand above high water, a little bit of sand can get blown up and you really don't want that going through the motors. <laughs> it's important to keep a bit of tension on the line. After the line's released, I'm 
straight onto it, taking the bow out of the line. Uh, sometimes it'll take you two or three minutes to actually come up tight against the sinker. A tight line is the key to catching fish and seeing the bites. If you've got a big belly in the line, you won't see the bites, and the fish don't really have any resistance to hook themselves against. So tight line equals more fish. The brown stuff around the line there is a bit of drifting seaweed. One of the really good things about drone fishing, a little bit of that drifting weed doesn't really matter because you cast straight over the top of it and normally you're well out past it. That looks like a keeper, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, just measure it on the board there. Yeah, way later. Wow, first line drone fishing, first cast, first fish. So I've cast the rod that we caught the fish on out again, and I've got the drone just coming back the second time, so um, things are starting to warm up. We're getting bites on both rods at this point, so who knows. We've got so much going on actually, uh, we've decided just to let this drone auto land. So it took off from the wet patch of sand, so it's a good place for it to land. You can see that auto landing is a bit slower than uh, manual landing, but it's very safe. Uh, do you want to wind yours in? Oh really? You don't. Not while they're biting. <laughs> you, know, you had bites not that long ago, didn't you? There hasn't been enough for, it, for the base for the strip. Don't yeah. put two large hooks in the rest of the small. Yeah. And big baits, eh? Big baits on the two big ones. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing bigger than my thumb on the other one. Yeah. This could get exciting later on, eh? Second cast of the day. Had a few bites, let it sit. There was no hurry, no hurry to bring it in. Definitely feels like there's something there though. Very excited. Can't wait. Yeah, there's a bit of weight there. Yeah. Might be undersized, eh? Yeah. Oh, it might be legal. We'll give it a measure anyway. Yeah. Oh, two. Yeah. How about that? The second cast. Very productive. Can't wait for the next one. Oh, yeah. Similar to the last one, I believe. The other one was a bit better. So, worth remembering uh, over the top of the tide. Yeah. That's a perfect day. Yeah. Overcast. But yeah. Still quite warm, the wind's dropped right off. Two hours before dusk. Yeah, that wind wouldn't even be five knots now. It's a little bit better, eh? Yeah.
So with that third cast, four fish. This is my first time out. This is incredible. We've got another rod nodding away. Can't wait to see what that one yields. So I quickly rebaited the gear and got the gear heading out again and as that rod was being cast we started getting some interesting bites on the next rod down. Now this is a very stiff rod, it's actually had about uh, 300 mil broken off the top of it and we just put another eye on it. There we go. <laughs> Starting to pull now. What an introduction to drone fishing. Four casts, fish on every cast. This is exciting stuff. We're using fresh mullet as bait. And on this set, we've got half a mullet head and a good chunk of the mullet gut on there too. So be interested to see what this fish is taking. First time today we've had to tighten the drag. <laughs> this is so exciting, it's the sort of thing that turns non-fishermen into mad keen fishermen. I'd heard how exciting, how fast and easy this was, but I didn't believe it until I've seen it. I see what all the fuss is about now. This style of fishing, we always recommend going hardy baits. Fresh mullet is our go-to. If you've got to go frozen, go squid or octopus. We, we avoid soft baits like pilchards, bonitos, things like that. They just come straight off the hook. Oh wow, that's a good fish. It looks like it could be more than one. Oh, was it tail? Yeah, it's a good fish. Good fish. Oh, yeah, I can see three. Yeah, Four. Four. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice fish. What an amazing day. Four sets, seven fish. I'm pretty certain this is my personal best. And we've still got the dust set to do. AE drone. 500 meter sets. Six hooks a set. Two minutes a set. Anyone can come to our free beach demonstrations. And this time of year you'll be seeing fish like this. This is the early October run of snapper moving down towards the Hauraki Gulf. If you go to our website www.fishingtacklesale.co.nz subscribe at the top right hand corner of any page we'll notify you where and when the next demo will take place. Hope to see you there and you never know you might even wind up with a fish.